Hey everybody, uh, I am no expert on music. I'm just learning to play uh, the piano right now from an app. Um, my only qualification for being here is I worked on a little website called turntable.fm, which some of you may have used. Half of you maybe, okay, sounds good. Uh, that site shut down unfortunately. However, some people preserved uh, the images and assets. And one thing I'm trying to work on actually is, is bringing back a version of it, Turntable 2, that is not centralized, that's free, that lets people play with their friends in their digital living rooms. And this, this is like a vision of it, and it's, it's looking pretty cool, but I'm not going to talk about this very much. I'm going to talk about these other trends that I'm seeing in music that I think kind of are supportive of this. Um, so if we can transition to the slides. So basically, the future of music, we think Turntable 2 will be a part of that. Um, but uh, let me tell you a little about the, the future of music is really, I think, a vision of, of the past, actually. Uh, humans have been making music since uh, we could, before we could remember. We've been playing drums and, and just making in new instruments. And uh, people just made music for free. They did it um, for rituals. They did it for fun. Um, and right now, over the past 100 years, it's become extremely commercialized and people uh, don't play instruments as much in, in, in groups together. And uh, we try to extract every single penny we can every time you play a song. Uh, that gets calculated and goes, goes somewhere. And uh, there, we're already seeing trends with SoundCloud and these other things where, where musicians or artists are saying, well, I just want this exposure. Let me put this music online for free. Uh, this, is, this is Woody Guthrie. Uh, he put a copyright license back uh, early on. Um, Cop copyright for music started 1839, uh, but it's actually interesting. Sound recordings didn't have copyright until like 1970s. Um, so you could actually, um, the, 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 the performance of a, of, a, of a sound recording didn't, didn't have any performance rights until the 70s. So it, copyright's actually a pretty complicated body of law, but what's interesting is that Woody Guthrie, like he definitely had a spirit of this. Like in, in the past, like they, they had a spirit of just let's make music Let's let people just copy it, play it, publish it, uh, remix it. Um, and I, I, I'm interested in getting us, the world, more in that direction. And instead of going more in that direction, we've kind of been taking a few steps backwards where um, in the 90s and 2000s, people had a lot of collections of MP3s that they bought or found other ways. Um, but recently now, a lot of, I think if you check your hard drives, you probably don't have any MP3s. You just use Spotify and rely on that. And you lost a lot of freedom in your music there. Um, sometimes you, you check out your Spotify and you're like, oh, I want to play this song again. And you find out that, that it was pulled. And now you can't even play that song, even though you were able to a month ago. Um, and, and so you're losing a lot of freedom in being able to play music. You're losing a lot of, a lot of these connections that, that music can make. And, and it's really about having humans make connections to other people. Um, another person that's doing something really interesting right now is Chance the Rapper. Um, he, he has an album that he released for free on iTunes, just download zero, zero cost. Um, this has really interesting effects because uh, the Grammys was saying that they don't want to give a Grammy to any, any music, any song that is free that you don't charge for. Um, that's like a minimum bar and that, create, you know, that supports this whole commercial structure of music, which I think in some ways is, is decreasing its ability to have the impact that it could have uh, in the digital age. In the digital age, um, music and, and information wants to go get around and, and be everywhere and permeate uh, all the culture. And instead, uh, in a capitalist system, you end up with these, these pop sensations that are kind of very top-down controlled, and you lose some of that freedom and, and spirit. Um, you know, Chance is saying, well, maybe he's going to make his money touring. Maybe he's going to make his money just selling T-shirts, um, custom T-shirts, selling his brand, selling, selling himself. Um, and he's not the only person kind of going into fashion. Um, a lot of musicians are, are really just building like a sense of their emotion and selling that. And, and the other guy doing a lot of that fashion stuff is uh, Kanye West. Uh, he, he just did a potentially billion dollar deal uh, where he's gonna be selling uh, shoes with Adidas and maybe other athletic wear. Um, started small, but uh, by, by taking by disconnecting his, his music from how he makes money. His music is a way that he's building his brand, building his, his stature. 
And if he makes a lot of his money just taking that brand and selling it in a fa packaged product, um, that starts to be a really interesting new way for artists to, to connect to their fans, but also be, be supported by them. And you know, these, these bigger stars can definitely, definitely do that, but I think there are opportunities for artists who don't have giant stadiums to tour as well. Um, another thing that Kanye did recently, I don't know if you heard about it, uh, basically he live streamed to 700 theaters worldwide uh, his new album release, Life of Pablo. And 100,000 people, like 100,000 people were just listening live, watching his fashion show, seeing the Yeezy brand. And it's something that digital technology is just now starting to realize the power of. Um, live, what, what, is, what does live mean? Uh, Facebook Live is really, really getting big. These, these Snapchats are basically almost live videos. And it's, it's, it's really connecting us to each other a lot more. And that's something I want to do uh, with, with bringing back something like Turntable, where um, you want to connect with your friends live, listen to music live, which is a very different experience than just playing some MP3s while you're running or just alone. Um, you, you want, you know, it's interesting to get that feedback. It's interesting to share. And, and we're, not just, we're just not sharing that much anymore. We're just kind of in our Spotify zone alone. Um, but, but what if, you know, not, not just these big acts, what if these more medium-sized acts or just up-and-coming people, what if instead of going to, to play a 10-person bar, what if they could play at, at 100 of those around the country at the same time, right? And now, you know, you, you can make a lot more efficient type of touring for, for bands that are just up-and-coming, really bring more income. And, and live is something that can't be uh, replicated. It's not something that can be copied. You can just kind of start shifting the income, saying, well, we're going to use our digital downloads for distribution, and then use live, which, which can never be copied. It's just one copy of myself doing it live. Even if you record it, that, that recording is no longer live. It loses some of that magic. It loses that feedback that you get. Um, I think these, these, these trends I'm seeing are, are going to get bigger and bigger uh, as long as we want to keep having a connection to music and to sharing and, and other people. Thank you.